Right, so it's screamingly obvious Manchester United need a striker and a senior striker, one that Rasmus Hoyland can learn from and someone that that's experienced enough to carry the weight of responsibility of being a striker at Manchester United. We live in an age where strikers are very, very rare, especially good ones. And there are only two names that United should be going for in the summer. And that is Ivan Tony and Ollie Watkins. And today I'm going to compare and contrast their numbers and see who's best suited to be Manchester United's new striker. So for the past 20 years, the change in formation of a lot of clubs, particularly the elite top level clubs, um, who certainly started the trend and it has been followed since by, you know, uh, mid table and lower end of the top leagues, is the adoption of a 4-3-3 or the 4-2-3-1, uh, essentially eliminating the need for two strikers. So often we've seen fantastic double acts in the premiership, whether it was, uh, you know, Ian Wright, Nicholas and Elka with Canu, maybe Burkamp, uh, a mixture of those four players. We had Cole, York, Solskjaer, Sheringham. Uh, at Liverpool, we had Fowler, um, Barosh, uh, Michael Owen. And, you know, even if it was uh, Mark Viduka, Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank, Robbie Keane, a lot of, you know, all, all the big clubs had two strikers. This, this was just normal. Uh, a lot of clubs would have three, if not four, elite level strikers uh, to come in and rotate. However, with the dawn of, you know, European, more European styles of, uh, of football and wanting to use more wide players, uh, utilizing wing backs, um, centralizing them, all, all sorts of changes in formation, the lone striker became the new way of doing things for all the top clubs. Off the back of the 99 season with York and Cole, with those two, you know, their, their, their powers depleting and United looking to replace that. I mean, we had Hughes and Cantona before, then we had Cole um, and Solskjaer, Cole and York. Um, there was always a double act. After that, when Ferguson decided to bring in Varane and adopt a more kind of dominating midfield, using more technicians uh, out wide and in the middle, the target man became the fashionable thing. As such, there became a real lack of strikers available on the market because much like goalkeepers, there was now only room for one striker at every club. You didn't get to see two strikers playing week in, week out, you know, getting 10, 15 goals apiece, laying on assists. You'd only ever see one. As a result of only seeing one, the reliance that teams had on their marquee striker uh, was so important that they were loath to losing that player. It's not as if when you had two strikers, you lose one, okay, we can bring in another one and they can learn off each other and one can support the other. Uh, if you lose your top-class striker, it's incredibly difficult to replace them. So clubs are very loath to lose them. Uh, they will only sell for a very, very high price. And even then, that's no guarantee of goals. So as such, the market for... Um, elite level strikers has shrunk literally by 50% and it's even more difficult to get those players from their respective clubs. We look at it now, it's been so, so difficult to find a striker that United have been kind of going in the, you know, the, the, the retirement home to try and, you know, eke out a few drops of magic from spent forces, whether that's Ibrahimovic, who Wiley did well, you can't be building a project off the back of a 35-year-old striker who's been playing a lot of his best years in France. Then we have Edinson Cavani, who was also the same as Ibrahimovic. Probably passed it, no doubt a good striker, and spent the majority of his best years in France. Ronaldo, of course, came in, uh, did very well in terms of goals, 18 goals. Mind you, he scored them in, I think, nine or 10 games. Uh, and overall, wasn't a hugely effective force. And did we score more goals as a team with his presence in it? Not a whole lot. Uh, I love Ronaldo, but uh, again, a spent force. And once he was up for sale, did anyone else come in and go for him? No. And now we're being linked with Karen Benzema. So this idea of United, I don't want United to become like Boca Juniors or Atletico Madrid, where, you know, aging stars go to a still reputable club, but a club who, you know, can't attract the elite, elite level players. So they kind of go a tier down or go for the formerly elite, but maybe a little bit old. 
And United have just been doing that too often over the last 10 years. And to go for someone like Karen Benzema, frankly, sends out a poor signal and I think would be the antithesis of how Ineos and Sir Jim Ratcliffe want to operate this club. It's very, very clear they want to have bloated, overpaid, uh, ageing players off their wage bill. And Benzema would not be cheap. And it's not the profile of player United are looking at. If you look at all the, the transfer rumours, if you've been watching any episodes um, over the last few weeks and months from myself, the, the targets United have been linked with, they're all 22, 23 and younger, down to 20, down to 18. Um, it's very rare. Yes, there's the odd Leon Goretzka and you know, players like that that are in there that are kind of 27 and 28, but the profile of player United want is young. However, if there is one area of the pitch where we can't afford to go young, it is in the striking department. We brought in Rasmus Hoyland, a very green player. We definitely paid over the odds for him. And it's frankly ridiculously unfair to expect a kid that young to come in and lead the line for a club as big as United that is doing as badly as United, where the burden and weight of responsibility to chip in with goals is just far too great for a, a man of his tender years to bear. Now you might say, what about Mbappe? What about Erling Haaland? Listen, these are outlier liars. These are not typical players. These are generational, once in a blue moon kind of talents. Wayne Rooney at 18, Michael Owen, Erling Haaland, Kylian Mbappe, Nicolas Anelka when he came onto the scene at, um, at Arsenal. Even Didier Drogba, for all his prowess, took a while to adapt when he got to Chelsea and didn't really start hitting form until he was around 24, 25. So trying to find... A striker that's A, good enough, B, available, and C, affordable, is almost impossible. And there are so few excellent strikers out there. We've seen, you know, clubs taking punts on Cody Gakbo, Darwin Nunes, uh, you know, Rasmus Hoyland. Uh, then you're bringing in the, the, the likes of, you know, Christopher Nkunku uh, for 50, 60 million quid over from Germany. And it, they're kind of, you don't know whether they're going to work out. Kai Havertz, Timo Werner. It's it's very, very difficult to find strikers that are going to be effective, certainly ones that can score double digits consistently season after season. However, there is two strikers in the Premier League who should be available, who should be affordable and are certainly good enough and have been doing it season after season um, at the highest level. And that is Ollie Watkins and Ivan Tony. And these are two players Manchester United absolutely have to go for. Now, they're going to be in competition with Arsenal and Chelsea, who will no doubt be looking to improve their forward line as well, because goals have been hard to come by um, for them uh, in periods. And Gabriel Jesus, while a fine player, is a wide player. He's not a central striker that's going to bag you, you know, 15, 20, 25, 30 goals a season. And... Manchester City figured that out pretty quick and was he a good enough wide player to, you know, force himself into the team ahead of others? Absolutely not. So United are going to be up against those two London-based clubs for those two players. And these are English boys. They appreciate what London can be as a location. However, they do also understand the allure of a team like Manchester United. Uh, Arsenal have not exactly been pulling up trees in terms of trophies recently. Chelsea are an absolute circus. And United with Ineos and with their appointments across the board, um, do look like a project that is very exciting and to me would look like a more attractive option. Of course, I'm going to be biased. But with Ineos coming in, the, the kind of changing of the guard that's happening at United and just the history that they have, they've got a better history than Arsenal and Chelsea. While Chelsea have been very successful in recent years and have you know won everything uh, uh, and multiple occasions, at the moment, that is a club in absolute crisis. So big are United that even... You, you know, United are in the papers all the time for how crazily and badly they're run. Chelsea have been twice as bad, having spent twice as much and don't get even close to as much coverage uh, as United do, uh, which speaks volumes, even though it's, it's, it's a bad compliment. It, it is still uh, a positive. So United do need to be looking at Ollie Watkins and Ivan Tony. Now, people have their preferences. I was always a bit of an Ivan Tony man. Uh, maybe because he was coming up through Brentford, was working miracles with them as a small team, came up absolutely smashing the championship out of it. Uh, and I think people had a soft spot for him. Uh, but the same could be said for Ollie Watkins. Um, both having come from Brentford, uh, after Ollie Watkins left to go to Villa, Ivan Tony filled his shoes and actually scored more goals in a similar amount of games. Um, two very good players that can play in a similar type of way. These are undoubtedly the two players that United should be going for in the summer. There is no one else available. 
uh, across Europe. It, it's too risky trying to bring someone in from a tier two league, whether that's Italy, whether it's Germany, whether that's uh, Portugal. The only place you should be looking for a striker is the Premier League or La Liga. And if you look across the board, there aren't many capable of scoring double digits and there's even less that are going to be actually available to buy. So Ivan Tony and Ollie Watkins are without doubt the standout options for a big club to come in and try and poach. So I wanted to kind of go through the numbers of these two players and just show you a comparison uh, of how these guys have been performing over the last few years and for you to maybe make your own mind up on who you'd prefer. So let's get into it. So looking at the ever-reliable FB ref uh, to get us some statistics, there's some good kind of interesting uh, statistics here that we can look at. So let's look at Ivan Tony. Um, made a big splash in the championship uh, with Brentford. I mean, before that, he was kind of with Wigan, Scunthorpe, uh, Newcastle, and uh, made big noise at Northampton um, as well at the time when he was there. But he really came into his own um, when he went to Peterborough, uh, playing in League One, and then obviously taking the step up into the championship. Now we can see here... Um, from uh, 45 games, got 44 starts, and uh, played 43 games uh, almost, the full 90 minutes. This is a player that does not get injured. Ivan Tony is a super reliable, which is what you need from a striker, is one that can stay fit, because if they can't, you have to have an exceptionally good backup, and that's even harder to find a good backup that's willing to play second fiddle. It's not like a, a substitute goalkeeper who's, pretty good and happy to sit on the bench and collect 50 grand a week not really doing a whole lot uh strikers aren't like that they they're not built like that particularly good ones uh so you need them to be able to stay fit and he is a player that can stay fit you can see here from 33 games almost 33 uh, he completed the full 90 and the same uh last year uh when he finished ninth with brentford so you can see in the championship um he got 31 goals from 45 games. Now, this is in contrast to Ollie Watkins, who got 26 goals from 46 games and um, got 10 assists, which is pretty good and probably the best season he's had in terms of assists. He's not a huge assists guy, uh, Mr. Ivan Tony. You can see here in the league, in his first league, um, out of 33 games, got 12 goals and five assists. 17 goal involvements in 33 games. That's one goal involvement every two games, which is a fantastic... Um, that's a fantastic return for a player playing in a team like Brentford. It was their first season back in the Premiership, and uh, he was a huge part of them uh, not being relegated, which many expected them uh, to be, uh, and got them a 13th place finished. And again, that rich vein of form continued in the next season, finishing ninth. Again, 33 games, 20 goals, and four assists, okay? Um, he's not an assists guy. He's there to take uh, to take all the goals for himself now. And Buemo has done quite well in his absence, as has Visa um, at Brentford. But now that he's back, uh, you can rest assured that he's going to be banging in similar numbers, I think, for the rest of the season. He's already had one game back uh, and one goal. Um, so Ivan Tony with 20 goals last season. 20 goals would have been enough to win the golden boot in at least 12 of the last 30 seasons. And in the last 30 seasons... Um, I think it's 21 or 22 of the last 30 seasons, 25 goals or less has won the golden boot. 10 times the golden boot has been won with 18 goals. That was earlier on in the league, but there was a few there in the, in the, in the two thousands where 18, uh, was the kind of the key number to get to. Of course, you're going to have those freak seasons like Andy Cole, Alan Shearer, uh, James Beatty, Erling Haaland, Mo Salah, where they get 30 plus goals. But that isn't as normal as some people might think it is. Yes, Salah and Haaland have, have put in crazy numbers. But really, if you want to get a golden boot, um, you're scoring anywhere between 18 and 25 goals. That That's going to win you the golden boot in probably 75% um of the previous 30 seasons uh, and Ivan Tony hits 20 goals that that is elite level football that's elite level goal getting at a team like Brentford and that's no respect to Brentford or no disrespect to Brentford but it's completely off the wall that a guy playing for Brentford should get 20 goals um now six of them were penalties and in in his um in his 33 goals um that he has scored uh, for Brentford 
11 of them have come from the spot. So a third of his goals have come from the penalty spot. Now, he has an incredible penalty record, even when he uh, in the championship. I think he scored 29 out of his 31 penalties. The guy knows how to strike the ball well, and he's known as a very good finisher. Uh, he can hit the ball very hard with very little um, uh, pullback from his foot, likes to find positions, uh, and tends to like to move in such a way where if the, if the defender takes their eye off Tony to keep an eye on the ball, Tony utilizes that kind of blindness uh, to make moves, to turn off the shoulder. That's the way he likes to play. He's very much a, 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 a striker in that, in that form. Um, so uh, Ivan Tony, in he's 27 years of age. He's coming into the absolute peak of his career, clearly after the, uh, the betting scandal now that he's back. People seem to, it's water under the bridge. I think people are kind of welcoming him back. No one cares that footballers are gambling. Everyone knows footballers gamble. It's just a case of don't get caught. He did. So I don't think the public really care all that much. I like Ivan Tony. I think what he's doing at a club the size of uh, Brentford is massively impressive. And he is certainly going to be due a move uh, at the end of this season. It just is a matter of where is he going to go? Now, there's a lot of talk of Chelsea and Arsenal, but I think United should absolutely be going after this guy. And and and, and so like so many other players that have uh, played for United in the past, they're winning all around them with United, but don't seem to be able to get into the England team. We saw, we've seen this with so many United players. Paul Scholes, incredibly not getting into the midfield ahead of Hargreaves, uh, Gerrard and Lampard. Andy Cole, despite sp- scoring 187 goals uh, 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 with hardly any of them penalties, by the way, in the Premier League, couldn't get a regular spot in the England team. Uh, it was Alan Shearer, Michael Owen, um, those kind of players were, were, were getting in ahead of him. Steve Bruce, captain fantastic in Manchester United, could not get a look in. Uh, into the England squad. And we've seen countless other players, even Rashford now. We've seen so many United players on the periphery uh, of the England squad. Not everyone was David Beckham and Gary Neville and Wayne Rooney. Uh, there was plenty of United legends that just did not get into the into the uh, England setup. And Ivan Tony's the same. I think he's only got a couple of, uh, couple of caps to his name. So international duty isn't going to be something that's going to be a, a big strain on him. I don't think he's going to be ousting Harry Kane anytime soon. Um, So he's a really interesting player and would have been my preference until I kind of did a little bit more research on Ollie Watkins, who's a a fine player and who was kind of gone under the radar um, up until kind of this season and maybe towards the tail end of last season. But his numbers are super, super impressive. So you can see here, even when he was at Brentford, 46 um, games and 25 goals. Again, not too high in the assist chart, but that is starting to change um, with Ollie Watkins. He did start at Brentford as a wide left player. So he did get fewer goals for Brentford. He still had an incredible 25 goals in 46 games. It's an incredible return. Um, But it's six behind Tony. So Tony does win on that one. Um, However, he used to play as a wide left forward. So very much on the left-hand side uh, and then coming in. He likes to play in from the left-hand side. Now, the only issue with that for a team like United is that's what Hoyland likes to do now, Hoyland and, and, and Tony aren't going to be playing on the pitch at the same time, you would imagine. So maybe it's a good thing that if if that's something Hoyland likes to do, it's something that Tony can replicate, or vice versa. If that's something Tony likes to do, but we bought Hoyland first, and Hoyland likes to up uh, to uh, to occupy those spaces out left uh, and then uh, cut in, and that's what Ollie Watkins likes to do. He likes to take the ball wide, cut into the spaces, either lay it on uh, or take the shots himself. Uh, but he does like to play and operate on the on the left hand side, whereas Tony does like to play a bit more centrally he does pick the ball up a little bit deeper and you can see here um as soon as he came into the premier league it's been double digits the whole way even when villa were were kind of floundering and flirting with relegation under uh steven gerrard uh and, and managers previous so in his first uh season in uh the premier league Uh, In 37 games, 14 goals, a fine return for a team that's kind of languishing in mid-table. Again, 14th um, in uh, the the next season, 35 games, 11 goals. Still a very, very good return for a team that was kind of struggling to get its act together. Then last season, they finished seventh after an horrendous start under Gerrard. Obviously, uh, Unai Emery comes in and just works absolutely miracles 
out with that team and has them playing fantastic football in 37 games, 15 goals and six assists. So 21 goal involvements in 37 games. And look at the games that they're playing. 37, 37 in the 90s. 35 games, 33 in the 90s. 37 games, 35 in the 90s. Another player that doesn't really get injured. The, 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 this guy plays nearly every minute of every game and this is what you need when you're going to have an elite level striker one that stays fit and who's always going to be available but what's most noticeable about this okay even this season 21 games okay nine goals eight assists 17 goal involvements in 21 games that is elite world class numbers and what's even more shocking is of all the goals that he's scored he's only scored three penalties I mean, it's it's quite incredible. I mean, I have them summarized here. Uh, Ollie Watkins, 130 games, 49 goals. This is just in the Premiership. 130 games, 49 goals, 21 assists, and only three penalties. But with Ivan Tony, in 67 games, there's been 33 goals, but 11 of those have been penalties, and he's only got nine assists. Um, so slightly different profile, um, but again, the numbers are so, so similar. I would be happy with either player, but based on the evidence of what I've seen, <clears throat> Ollie Watkins might be the better player. He He's done it more consistently. He scored double digits more consistently, and he seems to be in the ascendancy to have 17 goal involvements in 21 games for this Villa side with good players around him and a, and a high quality manager. It just goes to show that players do need to be in the right place at the right time. They can't do it all on their own. Um, he can operate off the left. So there are there is flexibility that if you do have an injury in the left, Ollie Watkins started his career on the left. He likes to come in off the left. So if we did have an issue with, with the left side uh, of the pitch, he can operate there and then you can have Hoyland uh, operating through the middle. So there's a huge amount of flexibility there. He clearly likes to lay, lay on assists as well. Now with Villa playing the way they are, there's goals all over, whether it's Douglas Luiz, Moussa Diaby, uh, Leon Bailey uh, came in and started doing crazy stuff uh, this season in terms of goals. Uh, and of course, uh, Ollie Watkins is continuing on that rich vein of form as well. Uh, you know, McGinn uh, and uh, and Cash even chipping in as well. So there's goals all over. So he does like to lay on, take the ball from deep, uh, run um, at opposition defenses, lay off the balls for one twos. And he is laying on the assist now. So that he has everything in his game. So after my research and looking at these two players, I'd be happy to have both. But to be honest, I am starting to lean towards Ollie Watkins. But the project at Villa is an exciting one. They are a big club. They have a big history. And it would take an awful lot of money to get Ollie Watkins out of that club. Ivan Tony, on the other hand, while he is super valuable to Brentford, Brentford are not going to be able to command the same kind of fee that Villa would. The project at Brentford is clearly not going to be on the same level as what's going on at Villa. He has served a six-month ban and Brentford have been able to survive reasonably well without him, with Mbwemo and Visa uh, chipping in at those goals. So, the reliance on him is not as big as it was. They won't be able to command as high a fee and, um, you know, he could be the more realistic option, but personally, I think I would be leaning towards Ollie Watkins after doing my research. What do you think? Uh, thoughts in the comments. So there you have it, guys. Um, that is a kind of full breakdown of uh, Ivan Tony and Ollie Watkins' performances in the league and in the championship before they hit the league, uh, both with Brentford. And both their statistics are, are very, very impressive. Slightly different players, but their numbers are, are very, very similar. Um, both playing in teams that have kind of been struggling and languishing around mid-table. Obviously, that's not been the case for Villa uh, this season and towards the tail end of last season. Um, and, you know, United are being linked with, you know, Brian Brobby, um, you know, at Ajax, you know, Jonathan David at Lille, uh, you know, a whole host of other kind of young strikers. Evan Ferguson, a player I like, he's Irish, I think he's going to be an absolute superstar, but he's in and out of the team at Brighton, um, and he's not the finished article yet. United need a finished article striker who's in the peak of their career, who's going to come in and guarantee, you know, 20 to 30 goal involvements between goals and assists every season. And that's exactly what these two players are. And to be honest, they are the only two players that are uh, available and at the requisite standard uh, that United and indeed Arsenal and Chelsea will need as well. And it's absolutely vital, in my opinion, that we get one or the other. Either one would be a coup, it would be a statement signing, and we should be happy to have either. But who would you prefer? Uh, Put your comments in. I, I'd be very curious to know what people are thinking in terms of Ivan Tony and Ollie Watkins. 
which way are you going to lean? I'm going to run a poll on Twitter as well, so make sure you get me on Twitter, Inside Man United Pod, and uh, I'll be running a poll on that as well, just to see what what way people are leaning in terms of uh, uh, of uh, Watkins or or Ivan Tony. Um, and that is it. So thank you once again for joining me. Do not forget hit that like button, hit subscribe, hit that notification, and as always, I will see you on the next one. <laughs>